Hey everyone, from the neighborhood or Crimson here. Um, I get, I think you guys have been waiting long enough for a new Pokefax, so how about it? Let's let's make a new Pokefax. Today we're going to cover the Water Evolutionary line of Kanto, which uh, consists of Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise. But if you didn't already know that, what the fuck? So to start things off, Neoway! Yeah, Squirtle's got one of them dollars too. As a species, Squirtle has been trained the most of all the Kanto starter Pokemon by major anime trainers, with Ash, May, and Gary each owning one. Statistically, Squirtle is the slowest Pokemon out of the three Kanto starter Pokemon, and in Super Smash Bros. Brawl it has the slowest running speed of all fo of the Pokemon trainers Pokemon. Though its attacks are generally faster than Pokemon trainers other two Pokemon, these two being Kanto starter Pokemon evolutions. Squirtle's family is the only Pokemon family that can learn Bubble, but cannot learn Bubble Beam. Except in Generation 1, where Bubble Beam was a TM. Even though Wartortle's ears are depicted lighter than its face in the original Sugimori stock art and most of its game sprites, the official promotional pictures usually have the ears the same color as its face. Blastoise, like Ho-Oh, as of the release of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Dialga and Palkia shares the first letter of its name with the game it is the mascot of, in this case, Pokemon Blue. Blastoise shares the same species name with Kabuto and Kabutops. They are all known as the Shellfish Pokemon. This is odd because despite both of Blastoise's pre-evolutions being turtles, Blastoise himself is stated to be a Shellfish. In Pokemon Stadium 2, there's a trainer in the 8th battle of Pokecup Ultra Ball R2, who has a Blastoise with both Haze and Mirror Coat. However, it is impossible to breed both of these moves on, on the same Blastoise until Generation 3. Blastoise is the only fully evolved form of Kanto starter Pokemon that does not have a secondary type. Blastoise is also the only fully evolved Kanto starter Pokemon not immune to Toxic Spikes. This is due to Venusaur being half Poison type, and Charizard being half flying type. And that's about it for the basic facts for the Water Kanto starter line. Um, a little disappointing for me personally, because while the other two had some really interesting things, uh, this line didn't really seem to have it so much. In fact, a lot of the uh, more interesting things seemed a little bit negative, honestly. Um, like the toxic spikes thing. Oh well. However, there is still more to this video. I wanted to catch up a few things that um, I didn't really cover in the last few videos. And that will be covering for uh, Pokemon in videos to come. For starters, we have the Pokemon's Japanese names. A lot of the Pokemon, when transferred outside of Japan, are changed from their original Japanese names. Um, before you ask, Pikachu is not one of them. Now, the reason why I was kind of I was wanting to cover them when I first started the series, but wasn't quite sure whether I should or not. This is because Gaijin Goomba over on the Game Theorist channel actually did a really cool episode on this, and you can find it out right over here. I did two episodes on it actually, uh, for their Japanese names of several Pokemon, and this includes all of the starter Pokemon for the Kanto region as well. So you might as well go and look over there if you want that. And in later Pokemon episodes, I'll be uh, I'll be giving out some information on their Japanese names, but there's no way I'd be able to do it with the quality that uh, Gaijin over here does because, well, he's really experienced with uh, Japanese culture and he's even lived in Japan for uh, a while. So uh, yeah, he's perfect for that kind of thing, and I don't feel like I should have to reiterate something that he expressed so well. So go on there over there and check out if you want to see the uh, Japanese names of Pokemon. Another thing I was, um, in my last episode, with the Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard episode, I mentioned that Charizard had a different, shiny, uh, shiny appearance in, uh, the original Silver, Gold, and Crystal than he did in later games. Looking at more Pokemon, I've noticed a lot of, uh, Pokemon actually had slightly different appearances, some as heavy as Charizard, some just barely different, but um, they are still like obviously different from uh, later versions, and this might be due to the limited color palette of the Game Boy Color. Um, I'm not entirely certain on that though, because I wasn't aware that black and red were hardy fine colors on uh, Game Boy, especially since black's before Game Boy Color. 
Uh, it was on the regular Game Boy. Or was that a dark green? I'm rambling! Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a montage there of some of the differences. And I'll leave you with that, and thank you guys for watching. And I'll be uh, showing these little differences at the end of each episode after their Japanese names. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching uh, Pokefax, and tune in next time. Montage in!